Oh! <laughs> 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 was that a ladyfish or a trout? That was a trout. What's That's up, a... everybody? Joe Simon's like diamonds. Man, Luke Simon's. We got some jumping here trout here. Early on the water. A little bit chilly this morning here in Tampa Bay. Sun is coming up. Got trout hitting the top water. And uh, we're basically stuck on the outside of this bar until we can go into the area we want. And we said, well, doggone it. Actually, I did get hit there pretty hard enough. To pop the hook out of the old Slim Shady. So we're just fishing, what, Luke, in a couple feet of water, just? Yep, shallow grass flat. The trout are finally starting to move back in. We had a really bad red tide uh, last summer and the trout really got decimated from it and uh, finally starting to come back. So All that right, is a so great thing. I got Slam Shaded 2.0, my little confidence bait with a little uh, Dr. Juice, Juice is loose. And Luke's got the Moon Walker Topwater. And so far we've had a couple of quick little strikes as soon as we've got our baits in the, in the water and hoping to even uh, get some snook action out here. And we are super shallow. Birds over here. You guys remember the three Bs? Birds, bait, and blow ups or boils. Either one. Either one counts. But today, this afternoon, we are going to be in pursuit of some uh, some redfish. We know there's some big schools of reds out here from the last time that we were here. And doggone, they were finicky. I mean, spooky as all get out. Yeah, they must be getting a ton of pressure. And, and so this time, I brought a cut ladyfish. Yep, so although what we prefer to use our artificial lures. Yeah, those trout are probably on the outside. We have no issues at all cutting up a ladyfish and letting it soak. That the yeah, and many times it will. I just got another uh, another little hit over Ooh. here. Yeah, they're around the edge. They're popping mine now. Oh yeah. Did you see that video I sent to you of that redfish? Yeah. <laughs> There's a video on Instagram of a redfish in the grass, and the guys. It looks like he was up suspended on a dock or something. And he is casting right over this redfish. And it, and, and it gets to the point, this redfish is completely ignoring his lure. Probably because he didn't have Slam Shady or Power Prawn. But uh, he is dragging it over the redfish's back and it's not moving. Uh, I thought the thing was dead and then he zoomed in, you could see it's Sitting there just, oh, oh, oh. they're going that after it. Came out of the water. Jeez. Oh, there oh. we are. There we are. So nice. Usually, usually when they hit it once, they'll keep, they'll keep following right. it. Luke is on. Trout time. Oh. Oh. Quick release. Now he's off. That was cool. Gotta love the early morning top water. Yeah, those trout, they do not like missing their meal. And uh, <laughs> when they hit and miss, they will almost always be following it, even sometimes 10, 15 feet or more. Ooh. There we, there we are. Trout! JoJo's on, little guy. Yeah, they're hanging. Oh, I just have one. One's hit mine. Or is this a ladyfish? <laughs> trout. Oh, this is a lady. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, keep him. Yeah, put him in the live well. Watch out there, Joel. Make sure I don't get any poop on you. These ladyfish. Love. Look at that, dude. I mean, golly. Get that thing off the boat. Amazing how much poop these things will do. Poop and blood, jeez. Yeah, Joel, yeah, right. see if you can follow this lure. Uh, we'll get basically right on this edge. There's been a lot of trout. Sometimes, oh, there we are. <laughs> they're literally just, they're all over this thing. Loops yeah, this on. is This is the moonwalker has just a great walk the dog action and it just, these trout, even snook and redfish just absolutely love this thing. All right, I'm gonna try to get some of this blood off. All right. Another good thing about these uh, these moonwalkers, they come with the inline hooks. Single inline hooks. Oh. Helps keep the unhooking of them a little bit less crazy. All right. Uh, right. Here. Man, he's in there good. All All right. One hook Put really good. For a second. What do you got, little trout there? Nice. Yeah, little trout, nice little guy. 
So the, just really cool to see these trout coming back. They, uh, they were basically non-existent for like six months after that red tide. And now back in action, Moonwalker ready to rock. Let's see if we can find a bigger one. Should have, uh, should have opportunity for some redfish out here too. <laughs> so we will... I'm still up here getting blood off. That lady fish. Woo, all right. Use some my own water. Not a fan. All right, anywho, we're talking about this crazy old redfish. And sometimes redfish do that. So if you've been in that situation where you're finding them and they won't hit anything, know that you're not alone. Sometimes it does help to just throw some cup bait out there. Old Peter Deke style. Yeah, that, that video was definitely not filmed in Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa <laughs> no. Bay, if you barely just look at them wrong, they're, they're spooking <laughs> off. And this guy literally had this lure and it was hitting it on his head. <laughs> like, and the, the redfish just sat there. It was posted up in some weeds. <laughs> And uh, I've never seen anything like that it was before. More like that was probably, Louisiana. Yeah, probably Louisiana or somewhere out there. Redfish. You guys haven't been out there. That's next level. One, you, they, you know, they just don't have the same type of pressure that they do here, like in Tampa Bay. It's so spread out. You know, we, we were out there two different days, and you just don't see many other boats. You see a ton of redfish, and uh, they're not spooky. They're aggressive. I mean, they're coming up, hitting your boat. It's so wild. Another kind of cool story, why we're waiting to move up in here. My Daiwa exists. I don't know that I'd recommend everyone buy a Daiwa exists because they are really expensive. And if you do lose it, you're kind of out of luck, but it does have a lifetime warranty meaning anything goes wrong, any parts, anything whatsoever, they replace it completely for free. And we'll even give you a whole new reel if that's what it calls for. So it's one of those kind of like, you know, Orvis luggage. I've had some Orvis luggage now for 20 something years and uh, you pay for it, but it's got a lifetime warranty in it and it'd have to get replaced once. They just gave me a whole new bag. So I got to start over fresh, but one of the other promises with Daiwa exists, and what's the other one? Uh, what's the other high-end one, Luke? The Certate? Uh, no. Uh, starts with an S. Someone help me out. Saltiga or? No. It's um, Romano Reel. I know. I'm just, it's something like that, though. Oh, ooh, I didn't hit there. But they have two different reels where they do this. Where, ooh, ooh, that was a big fish there. Dude, that, that was, was the a red real fish. big fish. That was a boil right there. You guys are, anyone wondering what a boil is? Ooh, another one just over here too. Yeah, those are the reds. They're here. Well, they're here. We're just, uh, at least one of them's here. Yeah. Anyhow, part of the deal with these expensive, because this is like $850 spinning reel. That is crazy expensive. I had a really tough time telling my wife what I bought. She's like, what do you mean? You didn't get a boat for $850 or a kayak? I know, honey, it's a little real. But part of the deal is that you can send it in to Daiwa or go to any of their preferred vendors in terms of tackle stores that do uh, Daiwa certified cleaning and get it completely serviced for free. And they put it at the front of the line. So if they have 100 reels they're working on, they literally will stop what they're doing and work on yours because they just don't sell that many of these, I assume. And they'll fix it, they'll clean it up, they'll service it, and then overnight it back to you. So here's what happened. Mine, it was about a year and a half old. It was still cre incredibly smooth, probably smoother than, than most normal brand new reels. But I was like, you kind of feel a little bit of, you know, just what salt water does after using and abusing an uh, inshore salt water uh, spinning reel for, uh, for a year and a half. So I had it serviced. And I sent it regular priority with tracking and some insurance to make sure it didn't, you know, get a ganked. And I think it was 10 bucks or whatever to, to ship it, 10 or 12 bucks. And um, they got it. So I sent it on a Monday. They got it on Wednesday in California. So it did get there in two days, which was kind of cool. 
and I had the thing back before the next Monday. So within a week, less than, it was actually six days total, I had the reel back. And it is smoother than ever before. And apparently there was some issue with the handle. They didn't, I didn't even realize it, but they replaced the handle, which was like 80 something dollars just for the handle. And of course they don't charge you for it. You just get a free one. So I got a new brand new handle, got this thing serviced and I was definitely wowed. I, uh, I sent our, our boy, Greg, Luke, you on? Yeah. Luke's on again. I sent him a message just saying, hey, I, I wanna make sure that, cause I wanna tell this story. I wanna make sure this wasn't just cause of me. And they're like, no, like, dude, they don't know who you are. They don't, the people there don't see who it is. This is what they do. Uh, and I was like, wow, that is absolutely nuts. A little bit uh, bigger trout here. Nope, Luke's on with the trout. So just want to give them a shout out because that is amazing customer service. Yeah, and that reel too, that's just next level reel. I, I use it, I used it when it was about a year old and it was like smoother than like any other reel that I've ever used. It is definitely, definitely if a next listening, level reel. You can probably hear the birds, it's a good sound. I'm on, oh, I was on. Come on there, buddy. There we are, quick release. Ooh, big shark on the Ooh, flat. Ready oh, for action. He's all ticked off. Ooh, yeah. So there's a shark. Oh, little trout. Oh, <laughs> he thought he was in the boat. Did you see the shark fin, Joel? Can you see it just directly behind you? Oh, yeah, it's, it's probably 100 yards out. That's a big shark. Yeah. Fin all the way out. He is in hunting mode. So he's uh, coming this way, actually. That would be pretty funny. Ooh. All right, we are in the trout Yeah, here. I got drilled twice. I slam Shady's a little bit jacked up, oh, but I don't know that it's going to matter. That ladyfish is going crazy back Ooh, that there. That might have been a redfish there. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> God, I love that sound. Oh, that man. one had like a, a reddish hue to it as well. That is such a cool sound when trout nailing that top water. Such a distinct sound. It's really cool. Oh, there we go. There. There Man, Moon Walker is. Uh, oh, just got off. Oh, there we go. As I say that, slam shady strikes again. All right. So nice to see the fish back here. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to jump in one. Teresa. Oh, popped off again. Not gone. I need to look at uh, changing out hooks here. This is an older one. Or maybe going to the hoss hook with a wider gap. What do you think, Luke? Hoss hook? Those yeah. things have been awesome. They definitely will increase the hookup ratio. So we teamed up with owner, because they do have the absolute best little pin, the twist lock, if you will. And we teamed up with them to get their pin, because that is a patent that they own on that. And then we created a wider gap hook called the Hoss Hook. And man, that thing's been sell selling like crazy. Right there next to the boat. Come on now. Mm. It's a nice trout there. These things are fired up. I think this uh, little cool weather, Luke, has got them, it's gotten them active. It's angry. Come here, little buddy. Yeah, it's a beautiful little trout there. Slam shady. Trying yeah. to find Mr. Redfish or Snook now. Twist lock. Here we go, bud. Get him back in. Slam shady still kicking here. All right. Some people, you know, talk about soft plastics not lasting long enough. It's usually because you're in junk fish. This is trip number two, so I was catching a lot of trout last time I used this. And also, I keep it on. Um, there are some lures you might wanna take off, but a lot of people ask that question, hey, do you keep it on? Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're not gonna be fishing for six months, then maybe not. But uh, I usually keep my lures on, don't you? Everything except gold. Is yeah, it, yeah it's, definitely not gold. Yeah, if it's, uh, it's water-based, like gold, or even like fish bites, those you, you have to take off. Everything else, I, I leave everything else on. I found that uh, the Z-Mans, 
if he, you don't have your tackle stored in a somewhat controlled state, and I'm talking about the temperature that is, the Z-Man will shrink up on you a little bit yep. if it gets too hot. Uh, so if you have it like in a really hot garage, or especially if it's outside. I, I remember leaving one uh, on the porch, and that little Z-Man, shrunk up yeah and, and fishing spots like this as far as trying to catch certain species so in general the trout hold a little bit deeper especially the smaller trout and so i'm pushing up i'm looking for redfish and snook now so i'm purposely pushing up a little bit shallower um out here is the deeper zone and then over here to the to the basically straight ahead of the boat is uh is shallow and we're just going right down on this trough and seeing if we can pick off a drag puller. Mm -hmm. Should be some in the area. Personally, I, I love starting with catching a few trout. There's something nice about getting tight lines right away. It takes a little bit of the pressure off. I mean, the, a big part of fishing is the confidence and it does help when you know you've already caught fish right away. There's a, uh, you know, some of it is in your head, right? When you have one of those just tough days and you start beating yourself up, or if you go right away, getting aggressive and going after really tactical types of fishing and meaning like sight fishing or something, there's days like that guy on that Instagram video where you find the 9010 zone and they just won't eat for whatever reason. Wrong time of the day. Maybe it just had a monster mullet. Oh, there we go. Oh, little uh, guy. That was a dink. And it is super shallow here, too. Uh, a couple other updates. This new uh, software, depending on when you're listening to this, the Smart Fishing Spot software. We used it to get out here today, which is pretty cool. Ooh, man, that was a bigger fish there. And, uh, up. I think it's one of the coolest things that we've done at Salt Strong. We've done a lot of cool things. Oh, sorry. Where, where did you go? Know. Yeah, okay. I didn't know you cast right there. But man, this is just next level in terms of helping you pre-trip plan to find the best spots and, and really the best time of day. And then I think for anyone doing any kind of near shore as well, holy smokes. I mean, the the information that we have in this Smart Fishing Spots system is stuff that other companies are charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for an area. Uh, you know, Nick, he's like, man, I can't believe we have access to this guy. I paid $200 to get all this high resolution under, basically that underwater view just for Bradenton area. And we have it for the whole country and, uh, and a whole lot more coming. The other thing is uh, that has come up is people, oh, and I sit there. People have been asking, hey, is this gonna be, because it is a progressive app. Oh, there we go. Oh, man, I'm getting just drilled. Having trouble setting the hook, apparently. They're asking if it's gonna be a, a full on app, like in the app store, and, and the answer is absolutely yes. So uh, already working on that. I am finally gonna redo my slam shave. This thing is getting, beat up to the point. Always remember, I always like to put them in a spare pocket. There's a good part and a bad part about that. Good news is I know if I come home and I got stuff in here, it goes immediately to the trash. The bad news is sometimes I forget that I have stuff in that pocket. And guess what, Joel? It makes it into the washing machine with the rest of my nice stuff. <laughs> and all of a sudden your entire laundry system reeks of Dr. Juice. And um, let's just say don't do that on Mother's Day. I won't do that again next year. It's a bad idea. Wife wasn't very happy about that one. Like, what is that? And why are there all of these little fishing lures in the washing machine? I'm like, it could have been anybody, babe. <laughs> anybody with the name of Joe. That is, so lesson learned. 
Throw right. away your plastics, but make sure you have a, a way to remember not to put them in the wash. Uh, have you done that, Luke? All the time. Yeah. Starting to like the scent, though. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty good. I'm Dr. G. Well, you probably don't want it on your church clothes. All right, so the sun is now just starting to come up. So the topwater bite's probably gonna start slowing down. Ooh, what's that back there? Something going to town. Yeah, because before the sun comes up, topwater is almost, is generally gonna be the best bet. I was catching more trout, and Joe's definitely gonna be catching more trout. And reds, no. and snook, <laughs> and cobia, and triple tails. But it still can work. So I'm gonna keep using it until Joe just starts catching fish in my face. In the face. All right. I had a nice, it looked like a redfish follow just a little bit ago. You know, there's gotta be some on this, uh, on this flat Ooh. here. Something just hit me just then. Oh, man. A little dinker. Something big out there. Oh, that's actually a bigger, decent sized fish. Let's see, eat it. Ah, oh, sauce, dang. So they're still following it. Is it a redfish, you think? Like, uh, it was probably a trout. Got it. I didn't, I didn't get a good look at it. Oh, man. I, I'm switching to a house, so I need a wider gap. Do you have a three out? Yeah. Yep, three outs just came out and the uh, reviews have been excellent. I'll keep it on here for the podcast just so we can keep getting some fishing going. When we go live, we go live. No cuts. Kids get to see what really happens out in the water. The good, the bad, the ugly, and Joe missing lots of strikes, but not that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we are. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, these things are just fired up just because that's still not a massive trout. It's not small either. They're just full of it. Have you ever done that? Have you ever caught like redfish and stuff in the winter months? Man, they are just woo, fueled. Oh, that's a good looking trout there. It's got two toother. Call them a snaggle tooth. Yeah, look how they inhale these things. Luke did that underwater video on that. I mean, they, they eat them like a big fat Italian man eats a pizza. I mean, they just go all in. Golly. I'm gonna have to, uh, he really inhaled this one. And that's why I always keep pliers on my side. If I can get the sucker out as quick as possible. Hold on, little buddy. Yeah, and looking Hold. at the underwater footage for them, they basically, and it was this was like every single one of them, is that they'll follow, they'll be following the lure and they they hit the tail they bump the tail up there we go. with their nose they're basically trying to flip that lure around to go head first and that's a big reason why if you are using top water especially the smaller ones they'll uh, they'll come and actually hit the lure out of the water and it's basically like they think they're hitting the tail up the fact that it's a hard bait it actually just kicks the lure all the way out of the water but uh, but really neat even though you know I caught them as small as like. 10 inches or so in the underwater camera rig. And I caught them up to 24 inches and whether it was big or small, they all did the same thing. They would come up from behind and, uh, and then from behind and below and then bump that tail out of their mouth. So basically it almost guarantees that a trout is not gonna bite the tail off of a lure. We used to always think like, oh, a trout just bit my tail off. And no, yep. that was a puffer fish. Yeah, puffer, puffer fish, pin fish. Puffers bite the tail. Maybe even a lizard fish. But it's not a trout. Trout do not bite tails, yep. Golly, slime all over me. It's a good thing though, right? Gotta love that fish slime. All right, we got a lot of trout. Now we gotta get a red and a snook. Man, this looks so good up here. Yeah. Another one, we're the only boat out here so far. Although we did see our boy Blackneck at the ramp. Oh, Cap Mike, good one. What a good dude. What a good dude. All right. So what else? Uh, let's talk about rod, Luke. A lot of people have asked about the custom rod with mud hole. 
Yep, still uh, getting the production going to have all the parts on order. Um, official prototype is uh, coming out soon. And I'm using we're looking, one, of, one of the first prototypes. Yeah, we're looking into like late July, August ish now for getting everything just done and and on the site. And it's gonna be made in USA? Yeah, made in the USA. Yeah, it's been cool um, how much we've been able to move to Made in USA. I mean, the Power Prawn USA, obviously it's called that for a reason, Made in USA. Uh, man, it Hoss, gives us- Hoss hooks. Hoss hooks, all Made, all in, made USA. in USA. Gives us so much more control. Uh, gives us a whole lot easier access to get inventory when we need it. And it creates jobs in America, uh, which is awesome. And, uh, and gosh, with these tariffs, and, and really just the shipping cost, because you can get stuff made cheaper in China, let's not lie. But after you factor in some of the shipping and the different tariffs and taxes, man, it's, and all the customs and just how long it takes, it's obnoxious. Uh, we've had to pay. And the, and the quality too, the amount of, of defects. Yeah, well, it depends on the manufacturer. Um, just like everything, there's good and bad ones. But yeah, some of them are just sloppy. And that's really frustrating when automatic 10% of everything you just bought is something we can't sell, which has happened to us many times. So we have to spend all that time doing our own quality control versus usually when you buy stuff in America, they have a QC person, quality control that is, uh, you know, at the shop of the plant and they're checking the stuff before it gets to you. And, and yeah, there's always going to be defects, just like anything in life with vehicles, boats, et cetera, motors, lures, but it's, man, so fewer. And uh, it's just, it's just nice to say stuff's made in America again. Need that. Um, all right. So what are you thinking? Thinking we have another probably 30 minutes before we can make it up over the bar. Ooh. And then we also have another lure mold. Can't say what it is yet, but uh, it's- Other than the fact that it's awesome. It is awesome. And uh, it's something that is very unique, something that we'll, we will most likely patent, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. And, uh, and it works, which is the even better news because we have been testing it. And uh, so we own the mold. Uh, we, we designed it actually. And um, it's got some really, really unique characteristics. It will cast a mile, it will skip better, and it looks really amazing on the drop. And uh, that's all I will say. And so yes, it is a soft plastic and it is different than anything else that we have out there. So stay tuned for uh, for that one. That'll probably be, what do you think, late summer as well? Yeah, yeah, that'll be late summer, early fall. Watch out, bird. Yeah, it works great for bass too. I took it bass fishing and man, they were all over it. Caught that one on my first cast, actually. Nice. Big bass? Nope. Uh, none, none were huge, but it was just a small little pond. They really don't have any big ones in there. They were all over it. Very cool. All right, well, uh, I say we'll, uh, we'll end this one. We just wanted to do a, a live. It'd been a little while since we did a live, uh, live podcast. And uh, we always enjoy them because one, we get to sit here and talk and teach and fish. And, uh, and hopefully it's good for you guys just to see the real world. You know, you see some of these TV shows and TV shows are entertainment. Let's call it spade a spade. They're great. I watch some of these shows. Uh, I enjoy watching them. But, you know, a 20 minute show sometimes is filmed over a four day fishing trip. And uh, we've been part of some of them. And like, all right guys, we've got to wear Ooh, the same shirts as yesterday. That was a big fish. Oh yeah, dude, I just saw that swirl by. It's still like, going, isn't it? Uh, I don't know, that, that sounded like a snook. Oh. Oh. oh, come on, eat it. Dang. It sounded like a nice snook. All right, sorry to interrupt. So, you know, with these fishing shows, just remember like, and, and I'm telling you this because I, I think with shows, which is kind of a highlight reel of, you know, like I said, maybe three or four days into 20 minutes, or even just seeing the stuff on Instagram, right? Or YouTube, you, you see 
the very best of what someone's going through. You many times don't see the struggle and all the cast even that we've done today in this little 30 minute show where we caught nothing, right? Uh, and so sometimes you get to thinking, oh man, am I the only one who doesn't catch a fish every single cast? And, and no, uh, man, Luke, you're still getting drilled in that top water. Yeah, they're still doing it. Any good brother would do, which is go right it's the, behind. It's the second flounder we spooked off. Yeah, that was wild. A little flounder just skirted right by. Oh, you stole my fish. Oh, that's, a, that's a trout. That's, that's a, a nice, nice trout. trout. Yeah, baby. All right, well, we're trying to end this episode. and there's a, Yeah, that's a trout. Yeah, that's a nice trout. Biggest one of the day. Hooray. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll end it on that one. Uh, but so stay tuned. Smart fishing spots. It is coming very, very, very soon. And that is the, the app, if you will. And uh, man, this is another one just inhaled that slam shady. Oh, come on, buddy. I'm trying to help you out. Oh, that's a beautiful trout there. Gotta love those spots. And uh, so be on the lookout for an email from us to kind of be a, a beta tester, if you will, on the smart fishing spot system. I wanna avoid getting my hands. And, and, if, and if you're looking for some, uh, oh, <laughs> he got rehooked after he slung out. That was a close one. That's why you always keep your rod close to you. He literally got rehooked. <laughs> and if you're looking to get better at, at using lures, we, we get the question all the time. A lot of people just are kind of reliant on, not kind of reliant, super reliant on live bait. You definitely do not have to have live bait to catch saltwater fish. This is just one of many examples. And uh, for early morning fishing for the shallows, these two lures that we have, is basically all that you need. You have a one top water, this is the Moonwalker, and then Joe has the Slam Shady 2.0, which is a, a three and a half inch paddle tail um, rigged on a weighted hook. Yep. And just those two lures, you can go out and just cover a, fit, a flat like this. We're basically fishing open water. We had a little bit of birds showing us some, some areas at first. Now we're just kind of winging it, but we're having constant action. It's a whole lot of fun. And uh, it's just with a couple good lures, you can go out and have a, a ton of fun on the water without having the, uh, the hassle of dealing with live bait. Yep. So I just want to throw that out there. Yep, and so make sure current Insider members stay tuned for an email from us. Uh, everyone else, whoop, uh, get in while you can because we will be raising the prices we've already been teasing Ooh. for uh, for the club just because of what's going into Ooh. this, uh, this oh, man, app. That Dude, that was a big fish. That was a big fish, all right. Yeah, get, go ahead and cast in there. I want to see what that was. Let's see if I can. So one trick with with top water is when you're getting strikes, you get a lot of misses. They always miss top water more than anything else. And uh, and throw a paddle tail in there after it, and they'll usually hit the paddle tail. That one I think felt the hook. Man, that was a big fish. That was. Whew. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, we'll end it here. Stay tuned for uh, for more insider members. Of course, we got some uh, insider fishing reports for you. That's where we show everything from you know, where we launched, where we caught fish, where we missed fish, kind of the whole kit and caboodle, pre-trip plan, post-trip analysis, doing one every single day, so fishing a new spot every single day for, uh, for our members and um, you know saving tons of money on the tackle. Got some new cool tackle coming and of course the smart fishing spot system. Wait till you see the next version. It is next level, something that no one else has done on any type of app where it's actually predictive analysis on what spots to actually fish. So based on the weather, like wind <laughs> yeah. direction and, and tide cycle, it is next level. Oh, it is so cool. So stay tuned. That's all at saltstrong.com. Appreciate you guys big time. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello, that would be awesome. Saltstrong.com, we appreciate you guys big time. Peace, we out, woo woo. See ya. <laughs>